Yo guys, my name is Tanmay Sakpal and I'm back with another video tutorial on C++ programming, especially the object-oriented paradigm. So in this video tutorial, we'll be covering up a very major topic in object-oriented paradigm that is inheritance in C++. Yes, inheritance is a very important topic in object-oriented programming, especially in C++ and any other object-oriented programming languages because it has a lot of advantages and merits and you'll see that in the code and we'll, as we go along in this lecture. Now, if you don't know what object-oriented programming is, you can check out this video which you can see on the top right corner in cards and I've covered quite a lot in object oriented programming in this playlist so you might want to check out the previous videos so with that being said let's get started so in this video we'll first go through a little bit of theoretical aspect of what is inheritance and we'll see how it works we'll see the different types of inheritance in c++ we'll take a basic example and i'll show you on the digital blackboard how inheritance works in real life so we'll compare it with a real life scenario then we'll see the different types as i mentioned and then lastly we'll also see how inheritance takes place so there are different types in which you can perform inheritance or different modes in which you can perform inheritance and all the explanation part aside we'll also see a practical example lastly so that you understand where exactly it can be used and how to use inheritance. So starting off with the basic theory. So as the name suggests, inheritance allows us to define a class in terms of another class, which essentially means you can create a class using another class. So what benefit does this have? Essentially, it provides two major benefits and two major advantages to programmers. It provides reusability and it provides maintainability of code. So since you're creating a class using another class, you don't have to type in all the data members and member functions and all the features of that class again. And you simply create it. So basically, you're copying and pasting the properties of that class into your new class. So that is for reusability and maintainability is for example, when the properties of the base class that the class that you're inheriting changes automatically the new class that you created using that base class gets those properties. So you don't have to make changes two times. So the code also remains consistent. Now these two points might not be very important when you are just beginning and you're writing code, which is like around 50 lines, that is small codes, small line of code. But when you're typing in code for around 100 or 200 lines and you're creating classes, which are very big at that time, reusability and maintainability is very important. And that's when inheritance shows its true colors and it is very advantageous for programmers. So it saves a lot of time. So the third point says the idea of inheritance implements the is a relationship. For example, mammal is an animal, dog is a mammal, hence dog is an animal. So this is sort of taking a real world example and I'll also show you an example in the real world scenario on the digital blackboard. Then the class from which the new class inherits properties is called base class. So that's what we're going to address the class using which we are going to derive a new class and the new class that is created using that base class is called as derived class. So pretty easy to understand. And lastly, we have a syntax. So this is how the syntax looks like. So you write in class derived class. So the derived class is where you actually name your class. And then you can see a colon sign, then the access specifier. So this is what I was talking about the mode in which you can perform inheritance. So there are three different modes and we'll talk that talk about that as well. And then the base class. So base class is where you again put the name and then opening and closing curly braces, like generally how you create a class. So this is going to be for the derived class and the data members and member functions are unique to the derived class and they are being created from the base class. So the, all the base class properties are also going to come into the derived class and only the public and protected properties are going to come in and we'll talk about that in a while. So this was a little bit about theory. So let me just give you a real world example. So let's just move on to the digital blackboard. Okay, so as you can see, I've taken a real world example that is inheritance in C++ and you can see I've created a base class. The base class name is animals. Now these pink values are data members and these yellow values are member functions. So this is the base class. Now you can see three derived classes which are inheriting properties from animals class. So the first one is mammals. So mammal is an animal. Then we have birds. Now bird again is also an animal and we have reptile, which is again a type of animal. So that is the reason why these three classes are inheriting these properties. So now the derived class mammal has its own two unique data members and two unique member functions for mammals. For birds, they have two different data members and it has one member function, which is unique to birds because you can see I have written fly, which is a member function. Now mammals don't usually fly. So that is why I have not included over here. It is unique to this case. Similarly for reptiles, they have two data members, which are unique to reptiles. For example, a reptile is venomous, but birds and mammals are not usually venomous. Similarly, it has its own unique member function. Functions. So these are member functions and data members which are unique to these three classes. However, you can see name and food type is going to be common with all these three child or derived classes because every animal is going to have a name and every animal is going to eat something that is the food type which is going to be herbivorous or carnivorous, right? So this is going to be common. That is the reason why it is declared in this 
main base class and since these three classes are going to inherit properties from this class these two data members are directly going to come into this without even typing it similarly every animal or every bird or every reptile is going to have his own voice so that they communicate in some way and they are going to take a nap so let, let's assume that they all sleep and that's why i've kept it common so these two functions that is member function from animal class are again going to come into these three derived classes. So this was a real world scenario and this is how inheritance can be actually implemented. So it is pretty similar to the real world scenario and that is the whole idea of object oriented programming to be more close to the real world environment. So now let's move on to the next concept. So as I mentioned there are different types of inheritance. So these are the five different types of inheritance in C++. The first one is single level inheritance. So there is one base class and there is one child class. So there is only one level. The second one is multi-level. So there is one base class, then there is a child class and there is a second child class which is inheriting properties from the first cl child class which is by default inheriting properties from the base class as well. So even this is happening. Then the third type is multiple inheritance which means there is one child class but it, it is inheriting properties from both base class 1 and base class 2. So if this has one variable and if this has another variable, both the variables are going to come over here. Then we have the fourth category which is hierarchical inheritance which essentially means that there is one base class and there are multiple child classes each of which are inheriting from the base class so you have one two and three child classes all of them are inheriting properties from the base class and lastly we have the hybrid inheritance wherein we have one base class then at the level one we have child class one and child class two so this is one and two or you can say these are the two different child classes at level one so this is level one and at level two we have child class two which is inheriting properties from child class 1 and 2 so this is child class 3 basically so essentially it is also inheriting from the base class so that is why this dotted line so these are the different types in which inheritance can happen and we'll go through each one individually in different video tutorials and we'll talk about them in deep and we'll also see programs individually for each of these types. but right now i just wanted to go with the overview of types of inheritance and then lastly we'll move on to the very important part that is the modes in which inheritance can happen and we'll see the access specifiers what what access specifiers are and how they affect the inheritance. Okay, so this is what I was talking about that is accessibility inheritance and this is very important concept. Now to the left side you can see that I have a code. So you can see I have a class base. So this is a base class. Inside this I have three different access specifiers. So I have public, I have private and I have protected. Now if you've been watching my videos and you've seen object oriented videos, you must have come across public and private but you've not seen protected. Now protected access specifier comes or falls between public and private. Now we know that private data members are not accessible outside the class so they are very restricted public is accessible everywhere outside the class so protected is somewhere in between and especially for inheritance so it essentially is created specially for derived class to access so for example in this case this private variable z is not going to be accessible or is not going to go to the derived class as well so always remember private data member of base can never go to child or derived class so this is never going to happen public will always go to the child and derived class and protected will also go so this is why three different variations and i'll tell you what is the difference between protected and public so you can see that there is a class which is public derived and you can see i have written public base now this was the syntax of inheritance so you can see that i have created a class base I have three variables in three different access specifiers. So X is public, Y is protected and Z is private. Then I have created a new class public derived. So the name of the class is public derived and here the inheritance is happening publicly. So this is the access specifier I was talking about and the base class is used. So all the properties from this are going to go publicly. So when we publicly inherit a class, here's what happens. So this is the accessibility in public inheritance. So this is accessibility from own class. So by own class, I mean the accessibility of base class all the variables are accessible inside the class so the data member or member function of base class can access all these three this is what is telling so accessible from derived class so private members are not going to come into the derived class anywhere so be it public be it protected or be it private the private members are not going to be accessible so you can see no then protected variables are going to come into the derived class so you can see 
y is protected so in this public derived class we have x and we have y but we do not have z so z is not coming into the derived class because it is private now when x is coming when we are publicly inheriting from base x is going to be public so x was public in the base so in the derived it is going to be public y was protected in the base so y is going to be protected in the base and z is not going to be accessible so let's take next case so we have created protected derived so this is one more class which is accessing base or which is inheriting base in a protected way so again x and y is going to come and z is never going to come because it is private so it is irrespective of the way we inherit it is not going to come but in this case x is going to be protected now you can see in the base x is public but when we are accessing it or inheriting it protected in a protected way x is now converted to a protected access specifier or access mode and y was protected so it is coming as it is and z as i told you is not going to be coming into this class as well and lastly we have third class so private derived so in this case we are inheriting the base class privately so now again x and y are going to come into this class and z is not going to come because z is private over here in the base but here x and y are now converted to private because we have privately inheriting base so what happens is when we are creating one more level of class or one more level in which so say for example now I create class private derived 2 and try to access this this class or try to inherit this class since all of them over here are private x and y which have come are private they won't be accessible in the second class so that is why I have created one more third row over here so you can see accessible from derived class private variables are not accessible protected are accessible and public are accessible so this is in public inheritance and accessible from second derived class private members as I told you again are not going to be accessible protected are going to be accessible and public is going to be accessible because they come in with the same access specifiers now when the accessibility is protected in the first level that is from own class every everything is accessible even private is accessible so this is for derived class for derived class private is not accessible protected is accessible and public is accessible but this public is now become protected in the first level of derived class again is it accessible from second derived class yes only when it is protected so both the variables are going to be in protected mode and the private again is not going to be accessible and lastly when we inherit properties from base class in a private mode the own class all data members are accessible so base class member functions can access base class data members even if they are private but but the derived class the first level of derived class cannot access the private members but it can access the public and protected members but they both are now converted to private so after first level of inheritance the derived class has all the data members in a private mode so that is the reason why the second level of inheritance cannot happen and they cannot inherit those data members because they've all converted into private in the first derived member so that is why we have all of these as no so this is a little bit confusing but I think you can try it out and actually go ahead and code this and you'll understand this and I have still last part left wherein we'll actually go ahead and see a program so if you want you can pause the screen and like again read out the comments and probably rewind it to get a better understandability because there's a lot of information to collect over here so with that being said let's move on to the practical aspect and the last part of this video tutorial that is we'll see a practical program so quickly open up your Dave C++ IDE and you can see on the screen I have already typed in the code because I don't want to waste a lot of time and I'll try to explain to you line by line and that will be faster because you can easily pause the screen and type it out and I would recommend that you actually type it out and like just don't go through this video lecture you actually type it out because that is the best way you can practice programming so I'll just quickly explain to you so we have the basic boilerplate that is hash include IO stream file using namespace standard and you can see that I have created a base class over here so the base class goes as follows we have the name as shape inside that inside the protected access specifier I have two data members int width and height and inside the public access specifier I have set width and set height so essentially I just created a class named shape with two data members and two setter functions wherein which set the value of width and height respectively now comes the inheritance part so you can see the derived class starts over here and the derived class name is rectangle so the base class has shape so it doesn't have any specific name of the shape but the derived class is a rectangle and you can see the inheritance syntax the colon over here in blue and I'm publicly inheriting shape which means that these two protected data members will directly come over here but although you cannot see over here after compiling these values would be coming directly over here and I have only one extra function which is get area which is unique to this rectangle class and which returns width and height now you can see there is no width and height data member inside this rectangle class but as I told you since it is inheriting publicly from shape this int width and height directly will come over here and then you can use this function so 
this was a simple derived class as i mentioned you can pause this video and type it out and if you want i'll share a link to this code you can just copy it and paste it in your ide but i would not suggest that lastly in the main function this is not necessary typing in void i have created an object of class rectangle so this is an object of derived class then i set with 5 and 7 and then lastly i call the function which is inside the derived class that is get area so the get area should return 35 because 5 into 7 is 35 so let's just save this and let's try to compile and run this okay so there you go with the output you can see total area is equal to 35 which means our program ran successfully and we got the required output so that means that the inheritance is taking place successfully and in this basic example we just saw a single level inheritance so that's how inheritance works you did not have to type in this part of the code over here and you also did not have to type in the function as well so i forgot to mention that even these two functions were inherited because they were in the public section so you can see i'm using a rectangle object to call set with even though the set with function is not over here but since it is inheriting publicly those functions are also included in our inherited class in our derived class so since inheritance is taking place you did not have to type in all this code repetitively again so that saves a lot of time and that's where inheritance shows its two advantages and so that's it for this video guys i hope you understood the concept of inheritance how it works the different types of inheritance and the modes in which you can perform inheritance that is the access specifiers and all and we'll see more variations of inheritance in a different program wherein we'll see different types of inheritance in the further videos as well so that's it for this video guys if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to this channel peace